Hello. This be my um, QBasic tutorial using ripping the examples from the C programming language, second edition, KNR. That's Brian W. Cunningham and Dennis M. Ritchie. So, there are two ways to uh, run QBasic. And that's it. Two ways ever possible. So one way is to, um, where is that one way? QBasic. Archive.org MS-DOS QBasic Megapack. This is one way. And it's basically like an online JavaScripted or something DOS box, maybe WebAssembly, that is running QBasic 1.1, not to be confused with QuickBasic 4. Point anything. Um, this is the ideal one. It is mostly compatible with QBasic or QuickBasic 4.5. You can maybe get away with like QB64 or FreeBasic or something, but preferably this exact version, Microsoft QBasic 1.1 is ideal one. You just click this power button and then right here to expand to full screen. The other option is to download DOSBox yourself and run this. If you want to change your graphics, I think I already showed that. I've already had to cut this video so many times that it feels like I haven't recorded anything. Okay, so basically I'm going through the C programming language and the book, but I'm not going through it in detail. I'm just going through it just enough to um, skim through and pick up on the examples and whatnot and try and like just sort of spill let a little bit of that spill over into the Q basic world which is this is more or less the same programming language that I very first learned to program in um, a subset of this language this one's cool because it's basically compatible with like those 8-bit style line number basics the really really simple like go to style basics spaghetti code basics and it's also compatible as like a block structured kind of basic um, maybe I'm, I use that term loosely but with outline numbers with um, functions and stuff like that so if you have any programming experience so it you can program in the more modern style and that helps it helps the knowledge to translate over to other languages like Python and JavaScript, Java, C, C++, all of that stuff. All of this, the stuff I'm going to go over, for the most part, is available in a very, very similar functionality in, in the other languages and the more professional or popular languages. That being said, you can use BASIC. I mean, the Windows version of BASIC that this evolved into was um, Visual BASIC. There's the free basic compiler which maybe compiles 64-bit now it for sure compiles like robust 32-bit executables and those programs I mean if you write a program and it accomplishes what you need and it happens to be written in basic it doesn't matter once it's all said and done these days people really don't know too much about the underlying language basic is a lot if you're going to relate it to any of the languages out there it's more like maybe Python and JavaScript like more of a scripty style like high level language um, that type of thing if you're gonna try and do like really intricate powerful corner cutting stuff this wouldn't be the language to do it in in my opinion that would be something more terse like C where you can just have a nice concise notation and the language is designed at a lower level a little bit closer to the hardware to kind of like tap into that stuff in a more efficient way but this one's a little bit more geared towards being human friendly um, like I said, it's from 19, circa 1990, so this is like a 30-year-old system, but a lot of people, including myself, think that this is still, I mean, it has its, its ups and downs and everything, but this is still one of the best, if not the best, way to get started into programming, especially if you've tried some of the other, you know, just tried to pick up and run with like a Python tutorial or JavaScript tutorial or something, and you just feel like your head's banging against the wall kind of thing. This might be the the baby step you need before you hit that 
So anyway, let's print hello to the terminal. So in basic, um, you just type print. It's a keyword. You type it out, and then it knows whatever you type after that in quotes, it will print. So we'll type uh, hello world, just because that's the famous thing in the C programming language. Put in between quotes, and then you can either press F5 key or come up here and go to run. Another thing too, if you don't want to use a mouse, you can hold the Alt key, just like in Windows, and then either use the arrows to go over there, or you can hit Alt R, and then uh, start Shift F5. I usually just press F5. Um, if you have already started running a more intricate program and you broke out of it, F5 will just continue where you had paused the program. Um, that that's a little bit easier. So when you get advanced, if you're you know, having huge programs, you're going to want to remember to press Shift F5 if you use the keyboard shortcut. So I'll press F5 to run it. And there's Hello World. It's way down at the bottom down there because it literally just pastes that in on the input, just like in the DOS terminal, like it pastes in the new command prompt. When you tell it to print, it does, a computer can only do exactly what you tell it to do. So if we run it again, F5. Bam, it prints right under itself again. One more time, press enter to continue. F5. So it will just keep printing and printing, and we'll just have all this garbage on the screen because we've never told the screen to erase. So press the home key and the enter key to bring that line down. There's another little command in basic called clear screen, CLS. So if you notice, if you type in a line and then like, navigate away from that line, it will capitalize it and stuff. If I take out this space here and go down, it will add the space. It'll basically try and like pretty format your, it will do a quick syntax check. As far as I know behind the scenes, it's actually compiling that line as soon as you leave it. So that's kind of handy. Sometimes it will yell at you though. If you type in, let's see, that didn't yell at me. We'll leave a quote off right here and then go down. Oh, it added the quote. Maybe try and leave a quote off here. Oh, wow. So sometimes it might do stuff like that that makes the best of whatever situation it can. Usually my luck is that it throws up error signs and that's more of the trouble so maybe I can just do something like that. Wow that is so weird I can't get it. Normally I can't get it to stop throwing error signs. Okay so this should clear the screen and then it should print hello world and we we'll press F5. Bam there it is and then enter to continue. And then if we press F5 again to run it again, only one hello world because it is clearing the screen every single time. So it's wiping off that old one and effectively writing a new one. So anyway, that's kind of like, that's the boilerplate for, for QBasic right there. Like if you want to have a skeleton program, it's like that simple. You just basically CLS and then start typing in commands. And you could do all sorts of stuff like, we could come down here and do another print statement and uh, like draw some underline under this. Maybe even put a little space right here. And put a quote, F5. A little fancy stuff like that. Maybe come down and do a little, just print a blank line, a blank line right there. So that gives that little space across the top of the screen. And you can do a colon and type another print statement, F5 and it prints two blank lines. The colon's basically like in other languages, it's kind of like the semicolon, where it's the end of the line. But in QBasic, we mainly only use it when we want to cram two statements onto one line. So this is probably one of the few appropriate situations. Back in the day when everybody really was, like throughout the 90s, I guess, trying to uh, write programs in this, they would, you could only have such a size of a program, less than 64K, so people would have to get creative and avoid just basically cram all of their code together and it was a big mess. But it's best to try and avoid that, try and avoid that cleverness if possible. If you're a new programmer, this is already probably looking a little bit complex. Whenever it gets to that point, just stop and, and just start at the beginning, you know, just the chunk that matters. Clear screen, print two blank lines, print hello world underline it so just walk through the steps and it might seem stupid but it will make so much sense
it will sort of refresh your mind on what's going on and that complexity is out of the way. I wanted to show you some, okay, I'm going to try really hard to get an error message now. There we go. So I tried to hit enter after I punched into that stuff and it's saying, hey, this isn't legit. So if you go away from it again after that, it will just let you, but it will warn you the first time. Let's run it. It should give us some type of error because it shouldn't know what rent is. There it is, syntax error. So when you see that, just read what it says. Syntax error means you typed something wrong. That statement's not a legit statement. Cool. And their help might give you a little hint too. So print F5, bam, we're all back working again. Okay, let's take this knowledge and do something a little bit more. Let's make a, a Celsius to Fahrenheit converter. Or excuse me, Fahrenheit to Celsius converter first, then we'll do it the other way around. So here's the equation for it. In basic, we can do uh, REM for, I think it stands for remark, and that's just sort of a comment. It doesn't get executed. So C equals 5 divided by 9 times Fahrenheit minus 32. So that's the equation. It's not going to run that. If I press F5, it just clears the screen. Nothing happens because that remark's saying, hey, this is for like the humans, or I want you to ignore this line for now. Like if it was a line of code that we just wanted to comment out, so to speak, and not execute. I think in this basic, you can also just do a semicolon like that, like ignore this line. No. Hmm. Oh, you know what? It's a single quote, I think. Ignore this. Yeah. So basically that single quote, that's probably the best way to do it. And in batch files, REM works. I don't know if the single quote, I don't think works in batch files too. But anyway, so that's the, the equation that will give us if we have a Fahrenheit value. So let's just try it out. Let's try, um, we'll say print. And then we'll just plug in the value, because print can also print numbers. So we'll give it the 5 divided by 9. Let's just see what 5 divided by 9 is. There it is, 0.555555. Okay, print 5 divided by 9, and then multiply that times. Let's pick a value for Fahrenheit. So 32 degrees is freezing. 32 minus 32 probably already guessed the answer to that. Let's run it. Zero. So freezing in Fahrenheit is equal to zero degrees in Celsius. So that's sort of like just playing with it to see, okay, you know, what type of things. So look, now we want to make it variable, right? We want to make it like it looks up here, sort of a mathematical algebraic looking equation. So we can plug in F. If we try and run it, we get this weird value, which is because F doesn't really have a value, which is weird that it's even a uh, print f. f is zero. Huh. Zero minus 32, so that's five divided by nine times negative 32. Yep. Okay, anyway, we can plug in a value for f right here. And we'll we'll actually, um, I'm going to get rid of that. It's a little bit distracting. So, in programming languages, there's this thing called a type. Don't worry about it too much right now, but like in Python and JavaScript, QBasic, or at least Python and JavaScript, you don't even really have to care about the type too much, and you can get away with that for quite a while. But in basic, I'm going to go ahead and take a side note right here, go into this help, which will be handy. And you can go into the contents. And then maybe half of this is useful still to this day. So where would the type be? Keywords, environment, converting, beyond. I'm not 
not seeing it. I know it's in here. Shortcut view depot kelp. Oh well, we'll dig through it by programming test. So you can either double click or right click on it and it will take you to there. You can use back, double or right click on it. Or actually I think it's maybe single click on those. So keywords by programming task. Yeah, you can double or right click on that to go back if you wanted to. So then you could, uh, down here it should have numeric types and stuff. Set traps. This is really handy though, this keyword index for all, all of these are those keywords like prints in here for device input and output. And you just use this little bar over here, kind of like a Windows bar to scroll down. So input, output, there's print. And you either double click it or right click it. Oh, I think you have to right click it apparently. So you can double click on these ones and then you can right click on that one, son of a bitch. All right. Print, file number, da da da. You can ignore file number. Everything in between these um, square brackets is optional. So just like we did the single print line to just print a bl blank line, that's one option. Um, ignore file number for now. That's if you have an open file and you want to like write to that file instead of writing to the terminal or the console. Expression list would be like variables or the mathematical expression that we did. Um, the string in quotes, the sentence in quotes, or phrase, hello world, that's an expression. And then you can either put a semicolon at the end or a comma if you want to do print like multiple things. So you can print like hello world and then comma your name. Um, the comma is going to move it over to like the next, they call it a print field. It's kind of like tabbing over, but not exactly the same, but very similar, like a hard coded column. And then the semicolon will just, um, this would be the semicolon, that will just immediately print the next thing. So if you wanted a space between hello world and your name, you'd have to like put a space in, in the quotes because it won't automatically space. It will be slammed up against the last one, which might seem annoying at first, but if you have to uh, build up statements to print or whatever, build up sentences to print, then you might need that feature. You might need to be able to put them together without any spacing. So that's handy for that. This is a pretty good example for how the help is laid out for QBasic. You know, you have the statement L print. You can just ignore that for now. Um, I think that prints to the printer, but maybe that's line print. I could be wrong. I, oh yeah, yeah, right here. It says it prints to LPT one, which will be the printer port. Okay, so yeah, you just come in here, they have the two similar ones stacked. These are obviously these uh, options. It's kind of like running a program on the command line where you have like the function or the procedure, they call it sometimes, especially in basic. And then uh, these would be like the parameters you pass. Each thing that has like a space, the space sort of denotes the parameters. In other languages, these are often in parentheses, like all the parameters go in parentheses and then the function name is um, lowercase or maybe just a few uppercase letters. This is actually a keyword. It's built into the language, but that's pretty rare. Most languages, the input and output is part of a library, which just means it's a little more detached. When they make it a keyword, it's a little less typing and it's a little faster to execute, but doesn't really make sense in the grand scheme of things, which you'll probably come to find out later. So here's an example for this one, which way too complex for you. If you're a new programmer, they're just opening a file for output is number one. To, I don't even want to use that as an example. It's so complicated for a beginner. Okay, let's get back to our program now. Um, you can basically just like double click on this down here. And I'll pop it back up. So I couldn't find what it was, but it, I basically can say like int f, and then that makes f an integer, if I'm remembering correctly, otherwise the compiler will yell at me, and we'll say 50 degrees, right? Let's go down, expected statement, so if I type integer, expected statement, well I didn't want to do it that way anyway, so 
you just do F percent and that tells it it's a number and if we go down it doesn't yell at us anymore but we need to stay consistent and do an F percent there so we'll just stick with that method with that and that's the way I learned originally in GW basic is you just type um, your variable name and then you either put a percent sign or a dollar sign and the dollar sign means string and when you see the S that kinda helps you read it like F string um, this one just when you see that percent sign think number so this will be the F number the Fahrenheit number and we're gonna set it to 50 plug that effectively it will you know store 50 into F this equal sign you could read as gets in your head um, basic decides whether or not you're asking if something equals or whether or not you're setting something to equal in almost all the more advanced languages you'll have two different symbols you'll have like um, one symbol that means it's an assignment operator and another one that's a comparison operator so in basic it's important to note that difference so right here we're assigning it we're saying that this f string gets the value of 50 and then down here f strings already been set or I'm sorry not f string the f number has already been set to 50 so it's going to plug it in f5 10 and you can punch that in a calculator and check it if you want I'm not going to um, don't tell anybody so then the next thing we need to keep up with the C programming language is stuff this in a loop which I don't know if I want to do just yet and I've already been talking a lot so we'll save that for the next one we're just going to print a heading print a heading above this table oh no we don't even do that because we don't have a table all right fine we'll do a loop okay so F isn't going to be equal to nothing because we want to loop through the values so we're going to start out with a while loop um, type in while and just put your cursor under it and hit F1 and that will take it take you to it and help you can see while condition and then all your code goes in here and this is the while end so this kind of like the brackets in be in the other languages and this condition would normally be in parentheses but not in basic and you can see there's also a do loop and a for loop which we'll get to so the condition is a numeric expression that basic evaluates as true non-zero or false zero double click on that so we can say while we don't want to run infinitely so we'll say while what say Fahrenheit number equals zero and while that Fahrenheit number is less than 120 then we're gonna run this but we need to make sure if we were to just run it right now it would just run forever because the Fahrenheit number would never change so we need to make sure that that Fahrenheit number changes too we'll just say Fahrenheit number equals the Fahrenheit number plus 20 just like the C programming book says while without an end so we'll come down here W end F5 there it is there's the equivalent temperatures for each one of those uh, I should have it print the Celsius too or the uh, the original Fahrenheit all right so we'll print F that and then a comma and the rest of the stuff so you can see there's the Celsius value on or that's Fahrenheit value did I do this wrong Fahrenheit is zero. Yeah, we're getting Celsius. That's right. Okay. So zero degrees Fahrenheit is 17 Celsius. 100 degrees Fahrenheit is 37.777 Celsius. So there's a table. I'm going to sort of space this over, give it a couple spaces. The trick is to stay consistent with that, and we'll bring this down a line. And this is all to make this all more readable here. So we know we have the clear screen we're initializing this variable to zero and then we're saying well that variable is less than 120 go ahead and and this indention shows you that that's 
it helps your eye see that that's in between there a lot easier to read so print that number without doing anything to it just print it as it is right now then go ahead and run it through the equation and print that answer which will effectively give us that Celsius value and then go ahead and take that number and add 20 to itself and then assign it back into that number and then it's not going to end when it gets here it's going to run this condition again and it's going to say when you added 20 to that number is it still less than 120 and if so go ahead and go in here get the Celsius print it print both of them and then come back and do the same thing over and over and then once this is 120 or greater then it's going to end and drop past this while end thing so we can say uh, print all done and there you can see okay so one of the challenges on the C book is to print a header above the table so somewhere up here we can just throw in a print statement print this will make it easier to um, I'll leave that as blank line right now and run it because right here it's sort of ambiguous which what was it Celsius Fahrenheit you saw me already getting confused about that so real world style thing print I'll just I don't know if I can spell Fahrenheit right I'm looking at it written where I probably spelled it wrong Fahrenheit and then we'll do comma space Celsius is that right Celsius all right and there it is but one thing we could do too maybe is if we put the comma outside like that Oop. and then that should work kind of like this comma in this print statement so it's printing the Fahrenheit value then it's going over to the next tab column and then it's printing the Celsius value so right here it will print this Fahrenheit string go over to the next column and then print the Celsius let's check it out there it is they line up with the values a little better that's one thing that QBasic makes really easy to do if you start trying to do this in the console in other languages you might get it to work but then try it in a different console or resize the window or something and it gets all bad QBasic's kind of like the DOS windows sort of like 80 by 25 or one of the very few resolutions or dimensions so it it's not too complicated all right so there's a fairly complex QBasic program for first run for sure that's more complex than hello world take a look at it type it in for yourself run it try doing different little things you know try changing the names of the variables try even naming this like in basic you can go ahead and uh, capitalize letters if you want that's kind of frowned upon C sharp sort of does something kind of funky like that but usually with the local variable kind of thing you're just gonna write it all lowercase like that and that's the format I'm gonna stick to because I don't uh, I don't want to get anybody in the wrong habits that they can't transfer so I'll copy that and then just come here and the copy and paste shortcuts are the old school like IBM style ones so we'll be shift insert to paste I'll just do that to uh, fix all these up and really this is probably the more proper way you want to do readable code so that you're not constantly wondering like what was F what did that stand for um, some people when they're beginning they don't like that so maybe just leave it at F or leave it at FAHR or something abbreviated but if you can be descriptive with your code with your variable names um, without it making the code look too complex then you should definitely err towards that so this is that I'm gonna let you go with that and um, just do everything you can with that kick it around and next time we'll expand upon the different loops and stuff like that don't be afraid to go into this help file um, maybe just go straight to index and then you can use this bar over here on the right and just scroll down you can see they're in alphabetical order there's all sorts of different keywords here um, 
you know what, forget that index. If you go back up to the top there, and then right click on contents, and keywords by programming task, right click on that. And these ones you can see control program flow. Do loop, where's that while loop we were just on? Are you kidding me? Do they not have the while loop in there? Do and exit for. I'm not seeing it. That is weird. It's got to be here somewhere. Maybe they literally forgot to fit. There's supposedly a few long standing errors in this, like that, but you could probably just go into like loop. Oh, yeah. Do while. So I guess technically in basic, you're, the long winded way is to type do while or until condition da, da 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 so the way I typed it must be like some at this time like less documented shortcut oh there it is while wind yeah that is so weird that is not in the index I'm right clicking on these that's something that I know is hard to remember to do or double click them and then right click double click on this and you can just go to file save if you want to and uh file exit and you're all done I'm gonna say no I don't want to save it and then just type exit right here to get out of DOS box